Greetings and welcome to Old Drunken Discography. On this show, we go through an artist's studio album discography, discussing each album and then ranking them personally, highlighting any notable non-album releases along the way. This is the start of our No Doubt studio album rankings, starting off with the self-titled. This week's panel is myself, Jason, Tim. That's me. And Bill, who is now a permanent member. No doubt about it. Until he gets tired of us and leaves us. Um, yeah, I guess we'll start with relationship slash history with the band. Who wants to go first? I can go first. I'll be short and sweet. Other than knowing about them as like a launching pad for a very successful career as a game show host. Uh, this is a new artist, new discography to me. Uh, I've been aware of them since Tragic Kingdom. But never knew anybody who actually listened to No Doubt. So these were brand new discography for me. Okay. What about you, Bill? So, I mean, not a super personal relationship. As with most bands that we've discovered as I come on here to listen and rank the discography. Those of you that aren't aware, I was not born when majority of the discography was out. Um, so I listened to a lot of stuff after the fact on the radio. I recognized the songs, and it wasn't until much later in life that I found out, hey, this is the band. And actually, I didn't realize some of these No Doubt songs were No Doubt until, well, I'd say about two years ago, give or take, when I was just perusing through uh, some music selections online for streaming. I'm like, oh, I recognize this song. Oh, no doubt. Don't recognize the name, but I sure as hell recognize the song. And I feel like that's actually kind of epitomizes No Doubt. As I was talking to my girlfriend earlier, and she did not recognize No Doubt at all when I said the name. Then I played some songs. She's like, oh, I recognize the song. Didn't know that it was No Doubt. And you both know who Gwen Stefani is. I was going to say, I bet... The name she's Gwen Stefani. Celebrity, knew, celebrity knew, to the stars there. Yeah. Exactly. Hey, we both knew who Gwen Stefani was. I was back in high school. I knew who Gwen Stefani was, which would have been most well, shortly after Push and Shove was when I was in high school. Actually, yeah, Push and Shove. Wow. Was okay. Yeah, shortly after Push and Shove. So that's why I was in high school. I knew who Gwen Stefani was. I didn't know who No Doubt was. So yeah, that's how I came about my relationship so relatively new discography like as a whole but familiarity with the music beforehand um well i knew who no doubt was in high school because that was 95 and sure tragic kingdom all that i remember trapped in the box but i didn't pay much attention to it at the time same and I knew Tragic Kingdom. I knew the, some of the singles after that. Rock Band had a lot of... It was another video with like the fishbowl lens. And at that point, they were all blending in together. Yeah, there was a lot of fishbowl lens stuff in the late 90s. Yeah. But th- most of this is a new discography for me after Tragic Kingdom. So I guess we will go back to the beginning. Dun, dun, dun. Let's get back where it all started. Oh, what a nice segue there. That was good. You, you want to carry on? What did you think of the first album? Uh, so first album. Um, a lot of these songs, it felt like was a good... I like how this started. Um, B&D, Let's Get Back. I felt like we're okay songs. Decent openers, especially for a self-titled debut album. Um, as for a lot of these songs in the middle, this was an album I felt like there was some dynamicness present, but I didn't feel much change from song to song, as opposed to we have in later albums, at least musically, as well as instrumentally. Um, definitely got some songs on here that, I mean, I recognize Paulina, Trapped in a Box, um, definitely two of the main ones that stood out for me. And, yeah, it was... I felt like it was a good start to their career. Um, it's interesting to see how they shaped from this album into the albums following it up, though. 
Um, especially getting about just because they did this album in 92. And unlike a couple of other artists we've covered, they actually, holy cow, released an album after album within two years of each other and not oh. six years apart. <laughs> well, just give that, a, give that a couple album cycles. And don't right. you worry. Yeah, yeah, some gaps. That's, here's, here's the thing. That's not till the end, though. And they only have that one gap. And that's way at the end when you really think about it, right? Cause these first sure, but albums, when you really think about it, that's what, two albums in the last 25 years? Well, they haven't released an album in, what, 12 years? And it was, what, 11 years in between that and the one before it? And then yeah. another six? Was it six between? I Rock think they're, they're, they're flirting with the ideal of a new album now because they're getting back together for Coachella. It'd be interesting to hear. I'm actually really curious to see what they even do with that show. Yeah, the so show, that... yeah. Like... It'd be interesting to see if they played anything off this. Yeah, I. It will. Yeah. Let's say I can't see them playing anything really off of this initial self-titled album. Some of the albums coming up, absolutely. But I mean, besides like Trapped in a Box, I don't see anything. No, really they'll, they'll play off it, of this one. They'll they'll pull a Blink One Eighty Two at Coachella and just like do a greatest hits type set. Probably that's gonna be what it is. Yeah, say, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be the next couple albums coming up, and then they'll play their singles compilation live and call it a day yep something off here would make a great deep cut though at the show oh absolutely. Um, but i don't think it's going to happen because this isn't a gwen stefani album this is an eric stefani album mm -hmm. yeah he, he wrote a lot of this yeah and uh it's it's very much of its time that late 80s early 90s like ska revival that was very popular uh, you know, among some punk rock circles. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not bad, but nothing really stood out to me on here. Like, uh, move on, I think is probably my favorite song right now. Um, I liked the halftime feel, uh, but like right off the bat, like BND felt like a game show theme to me. Um, <laughs> I could see it. I could see it. I could see it. And then when I see where careers end up, I'm like, oh, okay, you know. It makes sense. It makes sense. Um, yeah, this is fun. It's it's not a great album, but it's not a bad album. And it is fun. <laughs> Sorry. I like this record. And you just, you just described it. It's fun. Like, yeah, it's a fun album. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, my notes for the first one it sounds like a game show theme. I dug it. I like 80s I mean, sitcoms and theme, theme show and game shows themes. I mean, here's the thing: like, if you look at the album, the album art even looks like it'd be a like some sort of 80s or 90s sitcom. Again, I I think of Seinfeld when I see this album cover. That, yeah, that's very. That is a 90s. Yeah, album. it is. Yeah, it is. Which isn't a bad thing. I mean. It's my favorite. Who doesn't, who, who doesn't like Seinfeld in '90s and '80s sitcoms? Yeah, there's there's people. Out. <laughs> Do you like Seinfeld? Oh my god! Come I mean, on. I didn't like it then. Why am I gonna like it now? Why did you not like it then? Well, that's a whole other. That's, that's a whole, a whole other, other you know, still episode still other where I'm sitting at home watching Seinfeld and Friends every Tuesday night or whatever it was. Oh, I didn't get it. Yeah, I didn't watch. But CTV? No, I was out. All right, uh, I like this record. Um, let's get back. The opening lines of this discography. This is a very interesting situation. I sense a gradual loss of communication. Don't you think I can see you're changing on me? I'll give this opening line a four out of five. It's kind of makes sense when you see where it goes, too, huh? Yeah, it's slightly cool. Um. Doesn't quite sound like the No Doubt you heard on MTV back in the day, though. But no, Paulina. This this has more in line with like uh, even on Operation Ivy, or um, I mean, you could hear like the '80s influence, but at the time they had what like the Scatolites, Scatolites, whatever, however you want to pronounce it, and uh, like. Uh, not necessarily the mighty mighty Boston's, but a little bit. 
but a little bit. But I mean, they also like they they have like the descendants and the the um, yeah the vandals, you know, social whole... distortion, the adolescence, yeah, rich history, uh, Slayer. I just don't have any good notes for this one. It's all right. I think that as far as a pre-fame, no doubt, uh, this is this is pretty good. I do, you know, we'll get there, but I think they get better pretty quickly. No first That's album it. bias. No first album bias this time. No. Is that? It, it's a good and not compared to what some other bands stick out for a self-titled or inaugural album. This is still pretty good. I'm well, not saying it's great, but it's just good. Let it's me, good enough to keep their career going and start it out. It's not like, oh shoot, have an album, it busts, and then they completely flip to a different, you know, take or a tune. Let me ask you two tough questions. Is No Doubt's first album better than Def Leppard's first album? No. Now, are we saying relative to like how would they become? Or no. Because now would change based on just those two albums alone. I would say no. Now, would yeah, you I say, would vote Def Leppard on that. Would you say No Doubt's self-titled is better than Def Leppard's self-titled? Yes, I would. <sighs> Although. It's not by uh, much. Wow. I'd, I'd give Def Leppard self-titled the slight edge. Yeah, but that's, that's a good one, actually. Those of you guys that watch it, like, remember, I mean, go back and watch our review of the self-titled. I was on an island, but that's okay. You were on an island on that one. That's okay. It, it, it sounds like sense. I'm on an island on this one, because y'all don't sound like you're, you're like not on an island. Me. You're not on an island. I, maybe I'm going to have a hot take on the rankings here. <laughs> I don't. I don't think it's gonna be that hot of a take, honestly. Sinking, maybe you... Sinking's a top song contender. Like that's what I want out of a No Doubt song. Yeah, is that sure? But it's also like uh, you know, row 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 your boat. <laughs> it's literally a nursery rhyme. Yeah, but the lyrics are good. The metaphors about drinking. Sure. Yeah. No. I mean. I, I don't feel like um, th this band on this album sounds very raw still to me. And it doesn't sound like anybody's really found their voice other than Tony Canal. Uh, he just record. plays great bass playing throughout this entire discography. Uh, um, but everyone else feels like they're still... You know, I don't want to say learning the songs, but learning how to record the songs. Maybe it, it still sounds really rough to me. Yeah, you, they're not. They're not. A, they're not tight yet. Like they're not a tight right. band yet. And this, the songwriting is very amateur. There's a lot of cool ideas. It's it's a uh, solid. I want to call it foundation, but like it it laid the seed for what is to come. But yeah, for 92, this is probably eight tracks, maybe 16 at most. And it's not mixed very well. No, it's not mixed well at all. Um, and yeah, like, obviously Gwen hasn't found her voice yet. She still sounds very unsure of herself on this album. Um, and yeah. But otherwise, it's fun. Like, I would throw... You could throw, you could pick a song off here and throw it on a mixtape, and I'd be fine. Yeah, I love Paulina too. Paulina's fucking great. That was a good one. Yeah, but my yeah. my notes for uh, it, it, on get on the ball it says, I guess is the point where I mentioned the production. The mix is really weird on this record. Like the guitars are turned down too low for a lot of it. Mm -hmm. oh. Which was a thing in '92, though, um, among you know lower recordings not necessarily lower but cheaper that's the word I'm looking for More there is um, sound and apparently 
this is um i did have this in my notes yes uh th- what we heard like preparing for this show is apparently a re-recording that was paid for by interscope really yeah there's an original version out there somewhere because i know beacon street had that like beacon street they recorded on their own because interscope wouldn't right right but this one interscope made them (laughs) re-record wow interesting well luckily so yeah i'd be curious to like even compare this album to itself and hear the original recording interesting yeah the first album but even with interscope it only sold about thirty thousand, which in 92 was still peanuts yeah especially in the alternative scene which was you know literally in your kmart magazines and sears catalogs and everywhere at that point happy meals yeah i mean i remember hearing trapped in a box but it didn't really stand out you know it didn't make me curious to go buy this record Right. Again, I was also 12, but I just found never mind. You know, it's not going to. This album doesn't touch that, so. Understandable. See, no hot takes. Right. We all got it number one. That's right. Hot takes don't start until we get further in. Plus, honey. at 92, it's going up against Tears in Heaven. I mean. You did have that Clapped and Unplugged album in 92. That, that Clapped and Unplugged deal. album was. Uh, was pretty big that year. The biggest live selling record, wasn't it? Was yeah, it it's the best selling live record of all time, any genre. That's insane. Alright, anybody else got anything to say about No Doubt? I mean, really, it's... It's pretty straightforward. It. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. We gotta get to the more interesting I'm gonna stuff. put it at number one for now, but I have a feeling it might slide. It's also at number one for me. Well, yeah, it's always number one at the beginning, you <laughs> assholes. Hey, <laughs> we're just calling it how it is. All right, you heard that first. No doubt self-titled is their number one from here to the rest of this series. There's the there's the headline for the... Uh, the clickbait? For the clip. <laughs> yeah, clickbait yeah, there's our the clickbait title. <laughs> No doubt self-titled number one question mark exclamation mark. If you're watching this video, you'll notice there was no clickbait in the thumbnail because I am very planned ahead and have made the thumbnails two weeks ago. And <laughs> uh, I hate clickbait thumbnails, so pretend it's there. Pretend you got clickbaited. Yeah. Stick around. We're talking Beacon Street up next. Be safe, make good decisions. Thanks for watching. We have a blast doing this and hope you had one as well. If you like this content, please give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe. It really helps us grow and to reach our goal of 690 subscribers. You can also come hang out with us on Facebook and Discord in the links down below. Last but not least, thank you Patreon supporters. You guys rock. Be on the lookout for more behind the scenes cut content in the future as well.